Okay, in this lesson, we are going to learn the basics of top or turning moments. These are the learner's outcome. Okay, from dynamics, we learned that the forces can change the velocity of an object, which includes speeding it up, slowing down, or change direction. From this topic of lesson of uh, turning effect of forces, we'll learn that forces can also turn or rotate objects. So let's see what, the, what do we mean by turning or rotate objects. You can spin or rotate objects okay, by using a force. Okay, so you can make it spin faster. If you use a larger force, it will spin faster. Okay, if you want to stop, want to stop, of course you can stop it. Okay, you can spin the other direction. Oops. You can spin the other direction. And if you want to stop it, you can actually just uh, apply a force that is opposite to the first movement. So if you apply a force, we can uh, cause an object to rotate or uh, spin or turn. Okay, so similarly, if you want to stop an object from rotating or spinning, we can apply uh, opposite force to stop it. Um, do take note that in order to rotate, spin or turn, there must be a point of pivot. So for this case, the point of pivot is actually by the center. Okay, so this is where uh, the location where it doesn't spin at all and the rest of it spins. Um, direction of rotation, there are two. One is called clockwise and the other one is called anticlockwise. So clockwise means that it follows the direction of a clock, okay, like one, two, three, four, and so on. And clockwise means that it is opposing the direction uh, of the clock. So in this, in this case, it's this way. So what are the factors that actually also affect the magnitude of this uh, turning effect, besides the amount of force that you apply? So we use another simulation to help you to understand. This is seesaw you find that this is a place where you can uh, put objects and you cause it to turn. Okay, so this is a force that will cause it to turn. So if you place it over here, um, place it over here, it will cause it to uh, rotate. And of course, this is the pivot. Okay, so if you use a heavy object or a larger force, of course, it will spin faster. So this is the idea that you, the turning effect, okay, uh, spinning, making it uh, turn faster. Okay. Um, besides the heavy, uh, the force that you use, you find that by placing your the force at different location, even if it's the same force, you find that the turning effect is different. Okay. If you place it over here, you find that it would uh, turn faster, and if you place it over at uh, two meters, it turn even faster. So this is just to show you that the turning. Uh, not only depends on the force of 5 or 10, but also depends on where you place your uh, force. Okay, so as illustrated just now, you find that uh, not only the uh, force matters, the, the where you place it also matters. So uh, you find that this, the turning effect is lesser as compared to this, uh, okay, uh, even if they are using the same amount of force. Okay. Um, what we are looking at is the distance. Okay, so the distance, um, this is a large distance, this is a small distance. So um, if you have a large distance, you find that the turning effect, even you use the same force, would be more than as compared to a short distance. So this is a summary. The strength of magnitude of the force, okay, whether it's 5 kilo or 10 kilo, okay, and the distance of the force to the pivot. Okay, as illustrated just now, the this is the pivot. Okay, this is the pivot. So we are talking about where the force is and to the pivot. So this is the distance that we are talking about. Okay, so the magnitude of this turning effect is known as torque or turning moments or torque. And torque is equals to uh, force applied multiplied by the distance to the force to the pivot. Okay, so there are two factors, force and distance. And the unit for torque is Newton meter. So how do you calculate torque? Very simple. You just only need to apply a formula force times distance. Okay, even though this is five kilo, do take note that uh, the mass is not the weight, uh, not the force, but rather is the weight. So 
uh, it is weight is equal to mass uh, mg multiplied by the distance. So in this case, the answer will be 50 newton. Okay. Okay. What if you have two, okay, uh, objects, uh, or uh, on the on the seesaw? Okay. You find that what you need to do is just to uh, find for each individual. So for this one, for the five, okay, you, and you just need to find the distance of the five, okay, and for the ten, you just only need to find uh, for ten and the distance is two. So this is how you calculate, okay, this is as before, and then this is for uh, ten uh, and multiply by the distance to meters. So this will be the answer. Okay, but do take note that uh, even though the magnitude is the same, the direction is different. In this case, this one is trying to make it turn this way, so this is considered as in against the direction of clock, anti-clockwise. This is trying to make it turn this way, this is the clockwise direction. So, if you want to generate a certain uh, value of the turning effect, you can uh, use a large distance but a small force, or you can use a small distance but a large force. So that's why you can have the following situation where you can balance a heavy object using a fighter object. So this is what we meant. Okay, you find that this has a turning effect of 10 multiplied by 10 multiplied by 1. So this is 100 Newton meter. Okay, which in this case is the clockwise. Okay, but for this one, even though it is 5 kilo, uh, which is of course less than 10 kilo, you find that this is uh, 5 times 10 times 2, which is also 100 Newton meter, which is in this case turning it in an anti-clockwise manner. So these two actually oppose each other and they cancel each other out and you find that the thing will remain not rotation, not in rotation and it remains in balance. Okay, some application of this effect is that if you want to tighten or loosen a boat using a spanner, okay, will you rather use a longer or shorter spanner? You find that a longer spanner generally helps you to tighten or loosen the boat with less, less effort or force. Okay, why is that so? To generate a certain amount of turning effect, you can use, like I said, a longer distance and use a smaller force, or you can use a shorter distance used by using a la and use a larger force. So what I'm trying to say is that if you have this and this is the distance, okay, and this is the force. If you want to tighten it, you find that with a longer, with a longer uh, spanner, if you apply a force this way, so you have a longer distance. So you find that you, in order for you to tighten or loosen, you don't need to use such a small, uh, uh, large force, okay? Because you have a large distance. So, okay, you find that it's a certain top. If you have a very short uh, spanner, you find that the distance is very small, the distance is very small, but you have to use a large force. So you have to use a large force, a small distance to generate the same torque. So if you want it to make it easier, you will generally use a, a longer spanner. Okay, another way to look at it, as I mentioned, if you use a shorter spanner, you will, uh, if you use the same force, you will generate a smaller turning effect. So you are not able to make the boat as tight or you we may not be able to loosen a tight boat because your turning effect is too small. Okay? Or if you have a longer spanner, you'll be able to generate a larger turning effect. Okay, because with the same force, if you use a long large distance, you find that the top will be large. Okay? Same thing if you use a small force but you use a, you find that your small top. Okay? So so this is one uh, application that uh, of this idea. Okay, that's all for now.